So, AC pretty much went out on the Civic here. So, got all the parts together. Gonna rebuild it. Start on it here tonight. Uh, just had the system evacuated. So we're good on Freon and everything. So the first thing we need to do is unhook the battery. And the compressor is at the bottom. I could probably jack the car up. I could probably get it out of the bottom. But just to make it easier on me. Um, and since it's not that, um, it's not uh, much extra work. Uh, I'm gonna pull the uh, serpentine belt, pull the alternator, and you know do all my work from up here. Get the uh, hopefully get a compressor out. We'll pull it up top. Okay, got a negative off on the battery. Now. I tackle the hydraulic uh, belt tensioner there. So what I did, what I did is I put a 19 millimeter wrench on it, stacked another wrench on top. So we're going to use the leverage there to uh, take the pressure off the belt. But we can take it off. We'll pull this alternator out. So you can see how that takes the tension off the belt. Okay, got the belt out of the way. So now let's pull this cover back. Pull this. Take loose the wires, take loose this clip, cables attached to it, get this out of the way, and um, we'll get this unbolted. Okay, got all the wires out of the way. So we definitely got a bolt going through holding it here on the pivot point. And looks like it's bolted on right here at the hydraulic tensioner. Okay, so this side we're going to have to take, uh, yeah, the tensioner, this tensioner stuff out of the way to get the compressor out. So I'm going to go ahead and, see, I know there's one bolt down here. I've already got this one loose, so. Okay, so yeah, just the two bolts holding this on, got that out of the way. So it looks like this is probably going to be in the way too. <sighs> what I'll do is I'll go ahead and then get the uh, compressor lines took off. Should be four bolts on. I'll get all that loose and um, see if I can't and the uh, yeah and then see if I can't slide this out through the uh, wheel well. I got it jacked up and took the wheel off. So I think it'll be able to come out there. So okay, got all the lines off and got a compressor on board. It's just dangling there. Uh, also. Went ahead and took these lines off. Um, I had to unhook these anyway. Uh, this bigger one, just so you know the wrench size you're going to need for that is a 24 and a 27. See if I can wiggle this compressor out of the wheel well hole here. Couldn't, don't want enough space to wiggle it out of the wheel well here, so try and pull it up top. But I went ahead and broke this loose. So I'm going to take this, this piece of the tensioner off. face down. Uh, got it out like that. Go ahead and pull the bumper off. If you watch uh, some of my previous videos you can see how to do that in more detail but screw in each corner. These bolts up here on the grill. Um, still got this intact. A couple clips. Pull this radiator shroud off. Uh, a few clips around the bottom of the bumper and the uh, wind diffuser down there. Other than that, get those out. Should go ahead and pop loose, take it off. So I'm gonna get this out of the way real quick. I'm gonna start dealing with the dryer. Okay, bumper covers out. All right, so now you can see the, the dryer's mounted. So really the only thing to change this out will be I'm doing the bracket here, the band clamp. Okay. Bolt here at the bottom. Take that loose, then I uh, should be able to just pull this out. So really, uh. The only thing you really have to do is you know, take this bracket loose, this bolt at the bottom. Then if you had to, maybe swing this out of the way a little bit, should be able to get it off. But I'm going to go ahead and pull it, the condition completely out uh, along with the lines because I'm going to uh, blow everything out, get everything cleaned up real good before we put it back together. 
All right, so here's one of the seals here. So all you want to do is take a pick or a small flathead screwdriver and just uh, get up under the edge on it. And just pull it off. <clears throat> Don't have to be too careful here because uh, obviously we're replacing them, but um, I try to keep them semi-intact. That way you can compare these. Oops. That way you can compare the old one to the new one to make sure you uh, get the right one out. That they just come in a uh, typically they just come in a pack and they're not labeled or anything. So, so this is this is gonna match up. So another thing you want to do is uh, to prevent damaging them and just to help seal better and ease install. Take a little uh, fresh um, AC oil. In this case, it's going to be PAG 46, and uh, just put a little bit on the seal. <clears throat> and that'll aid with the install. Got it oiled up. Just slide it on. Very simple. So, there you go. Just make sure you got a nice. It's nice and snug. It's not loose moving around. So, like I said, go ahead and make sure you got a little on the outside of it. Right, as easy as that. Okay, that one's out. Take this one out. Okay, so should just slide off of this manifold here. Get a little stuck with the wiggle. There you go. So the first thing I notice is there should be seals here on these pieces and when it came off they're not so that means they're still in here so I'm going to have to come in here we'll pull these seals out with a pick that way when we put the new one down you know we don't double seal it and it'll uh, seal up nicely. You might not be able to see from this angle but just come in here and pull these out very simply. So we have a perfect example of why to be cautious with aftermarket parts. So this new one came with O-rings already installed. And when I tried to install it, it was just way too tight in this block. When I tightened it down, um, I just didn't feel good about it. So I took it out, back out and checked. And the uh, it actually tore the seals. So I went to my seal replacement kit I bought. And um, the ones that came in the kit were actually uh, a lot better fit here. So luckily we took the time to, luckily I had the another set of seals and took the time to, you know, verify the fitment here. So I think we shouldn't have any trouble with this setup here. There we go. Some nice seal there compared to the ones that came in it. Man, I really had to force it. So I feel a lot better about this. I hate to put take the time to put all this together and then end up having trouble with it and taking it back apart. Ready to go in. Okay, so now we're moving on to the inside of the car to start the expansion valve. Um, Alright, so we're going to be taking out the glove box and the majority of the, like the blower box and everything, uh, the majority of the stuff on the under the passenger side of the dashboard here. So I'm a big dude, you know, uh, so I'm going to actually pull this uh, passenger seat out just to give me plenty of room to work in here comfortably. If you're going to do that, which we already have the battery unhooked, but make sure you unhook the battery that way uh, because there is, you know, airbag and a lot of SRS stuff associated with the seats here. So make sure you unhook the battery before you go and plug in anything dealing with the seats. So we'll go ahead and get the seat out and we'll start working on the expansion valve. All right, I got the seat out, which took like five minutes. Um, it's four bolts holding it in, 14 millimeter bolts. One 14 millimeter bolt holding the seat belt to the seat and four uh, wiring connectors. So well worth the time to do that. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, start taking this dash apart. First thing I'm going to do is take the glove box out. Okay, after you get all that junk out of your glove box that I know you have in there, now you can go ahead and to drop the glove box down. You just press in on the sides right here, which is hard to do while I'm talking to you. But press down on these side pieces and you'll be able to see it releasing the box and it'll swing down. Like so. There you can see the tabs you're pressing in on. Okay, now there's a couple nuts right back here that are holding the glove box to the dash. So we'll go ahead and pull those off. Okay, all right, we got the box unbolted. 
so the bolts going down through here, they're 8 millimeters. Also, there's a little black plastic cover right here, up under the bottom, I forgot to tell you, just pop that right on out. Um, like I said, we're going to cut these, but first, uh, a couple more 8 millimeters right here to pull this metal bracket out. Then we'll get these cut, then we'll move on. Okay guys, so we got our bracket out. And one thing I like to always do is, whenever I take something apart, if I can, put the bolts back in it. That way you don't lose them. You remember which one goes where. Also, we went ahead and cut this piece out. I use a pneumatic, uh, what I call a body saw here. That uh, allow me to give a precise cut. So now we need to get this blower box out. So, obviously you got a bolt here. Um, one right here. If you can see back there on the other side of that. There you go, that one. And let's see. Really hard to show everything. There's a couple. If you can see that one back there. And then there's one on this side as well. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can. Well, I can't really show you too good. That's way back there. Okay, so also you got a couple down here. Okay, you've also got a connector down here for the blower. And pop this clip loose. Just gonna have to get this wire out of the way. So we can put a box out. Okay, so we got all the bolts out. This thing's ready to come out. Really easy to do, man. Um, just need a long extension, um, deep socket. Helps to have an uh, universal joint. Also, I like to use these on some jobs like this one because once you put the weight of the deep socket on it and trying to get it up in there these tend to really flop all the way down and it's hard to get it lined up so these are a good investment to have never know when you're going to need them so other than that well, let's get some light up here so other than that um, see that green connector then follow the wire over so you need to unhook the connector there and pop the uh, wire out of the around the box here so we can pull the box out okay try to get this loose but it's hanging up on over here and on this side so um, put it back in place um, took this loose I gotta pull this piece out there's a screw here and I think there's another one in the back so let's get that out and then we'll be able to pull this box out okay so as you can see now we got the blower assembly out now we're going to have to start working on taking this stuff apart um, until we can get to the uh, evaporator and the expansion valve. First, let's go inside the engine bay and unbolt the AC lines from the firewall. Okay, yeah, so we get a good look there. So you can see where the lines run to the firewall. So one bolt holding it on. So go ahead and pull that loose. Pull these lines out. Also, there's a stud. Well, actually the bolt itself once you pull the nut off pull the lines out um it is a stud so you'll need to take that out as well so let's go ahead and pull that out then we'll move uh, get these lines out of the way and then we'll move back into the inside of the car also of course while we got these lines out we're going to replace any necessary seals and get these cleaned out okay everything under the dash is done so we're going to come through here and disconnect these cables we are going to start coming through and Taking all the screws out that hold this in. That way we can slide it out. So it's probably gonna be some some weird places, but just take loose everything you see, see what you got, and kind of figure out uh, you know, if there's something still holding it or not, and go from there. Okay, so we just pulled the cover off. Okay, very self-explanatory. As you can see, you just got um, screw holes around the outside. The only thing the only thing that was a surprise is at the back, it's going to be up against the firewall if you're looking at it like that. There's a screw back up in there. And you need a somewhat long uh, screwdriver to get up in there, but still, nothing to it. So we got that off. Let's see if we can get this evaporator assembly pulled out of here. not to damage it okay there we go we'll 
pull it out and put it on the bench. We'll check it out. Okay, so we got the evaporator out. <clears throat> now you can see our expansion valve here, which is what we're going to be servicing. So, actually, it looks really clean. I was going to come through here and clean this thing out, but man, it's spotless. So, now let's go through and change this out. Let's grab our new one here. Here's our new one. Now let's slide it off. Okay, there you go. Okay, so I got that switched out. Uh, tried to, I was going to retain this foam, but there's really, the way it's glued on, it's really impossible to do that, so. Got everything back in, bolt it back together, so we're going to slide this back in place. Okay. All right, as you can see, we got the evaporator assembly back in and the cover back in. All our screws back in. Then we're going to hook up our cables and put our blower box in. Okay. <clears throat> so we cleared our lines out. We put new uh, seals on the end. And we got that back installed. Okay. Everything back together here. Our connector is plugged in, everything bolted in, got this back in. The so only thing left to do is uh, put our glove box on, plastic trim panel down here, then we'll be going up under the hood to finish up the install in there. Okay, we got the inside all buttoned up, dashing everything put back together. So now we're going to transition to the engine bay. So, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, We'll go ahead and put the uh, get the compressor situated. Then after that, we'll start um, running the lines and putting the condenser back in. There we go. Easy as that. Now we we'll just put our bolts in. The longer bolts go up top. Um, what I really like about this design is. The bracket actually has a place where you can kind of just hang the compressor there, which is really nice. Um, that way you don't have to hold it while you're trying to start a bolt. So go ahead and put the bolts in. Um, just start hooking up all the lines. All right, got a condenser in. Got a compressor in. Got a tensioner bracket in. The hydraulic tensioner in. Uh, got all the lines in, hooked up, tightened up. So, all we got to do now is set our alternator back in, hook our electrical up. Right, so we got an alternator on, everything wired up, so we are completely done. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to jack it up, pull the wheel back off. So I've uh, got to put these plastics back in the wheel well, route our belt, put a bumper back on, and button everything up, and good to go. Alright, so everything's good to go, everything's wrapped up. Just had the system charged. Just an overview here. Took it's about a day's worth of work. I spent about three hundred fifty dollars in parts. You can do it a little cheaper if you go, you know, all at the market on it. Um, and that price is not including refrigerant or oil. So, all in all, wasn't a bad job. Hope you enjoyed the video here, and stay tuned for more.